shame and the muck and the mess ups of our lives on his innocent life and pay in full to buy us back for God. He was, he was dead and buried, descended into the lower parts of the earth. And on the third day, the Father would call his name and he would be raised up to everlasting life. And when he was raised up, he remembered me. When he was raised up, he remembered me. And he said to me, Louis, I've got power. I love it. I got power over death. I got power over the grave. I got power over the darkness. I have power over sin. And if you put your trust in me, I'll give you a brand new heart. And I'll put breath in your lungs again. And, and you know why he did it? It was not so I could check a box and go to heaven when I die. Thank you. It was so that if I wake up on this broken earth tomorrow, I will have undeniable God heart beating inside of me. so that I can join the symphony of all creation and that's what I'm going to do. And I see the cross of Christ and I hear the words of the New Testament in Peter when he says that he brought us back to life that we might proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. It just makes me want to open my heart, my life, and everything I've got, just lifting my hands up to Him in total abandon. Thank you, Father. And awesome praise. You know, it's kind of cold being here tonight because we have the whole church in here. But some of you are not used to that. And you're kind of still asking that question like, dude, they're like people around me raising their hands all night long. What is that about? Mm -hmm. I want to tell you what that's about. That's just about a response to the overwhelming beauty of the cross of Jesus. thing. I'm not sure about that. There's a lady in front of me and she was just all about it, you know, during a couple Christmas songs. And I just want to tell you, that's not a church thing. What she was doing wasn't just a church thing. It wasn't a denominational thing. It really wasn't even a spiritual thing. It's a human thing. That's what human beings do when something of great value or worth is placed in front of the human heart. That's what human beings do. If you've ever been to Heinz Field, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about how all over the world, in jubilant celebration, human beings just give it everything they've got. <laughs> you want to see what I'm talking about? I'm just going to take you a little quick little 30 second spin. This is pretty fun. We're going to start down in uh, Bandiachi, Indonesia. Check these kids out. We just did a little survey for you. Aren't they cool and cute? You're like, what are they so excited about? You ready? First day of school. <laughs> We grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. We did not do that on the first day of school in Atlanta, Georgia. But look at it. This next one's a little scary, so don't be alarmed. Hot dog eating contest. You ahead of me? Coney Island, July 4th. I brought this one into the mix because I like the fist. Some of you men, you're not sure about that whole raising hands in church thing. And I get that sometimes. But I really believe us men ought to be leading the way. Amen. I think we ought to be the ones leading the way. Come on, men. I've been working for years and just give them the fifth because that's a very appropriate response to say, you know what? Sometimes life is tough. You, you agree? But Christ is alive. Sometimes the darkness closes in, but Jesus is still raised up from the dead. So come on, this is my worship. This is my thing. This next one's really, really getting close to home. Big worship event, right? No, that's a Coldplay concert in a big stadium in Germany. Coldplay's a band, Mom and Dad. You're like, well, how did all the charismatic people get up front? This one you just can't live without. understand this worship thing we're talking about it's an age specific 
You don't have to wait till you're a certain age to understand it. It's just part of humanity. Finally, when you're at, you're like, thank you very much. We had that here, the Easter sunrise service, right? No. Nope. Those are the Druids. They do not follow Jesus. They're at Stonehenge in England on the summer solstice last summer, the longest day of the year. And they are lifting up their hands to the sun. Oh, not the Son of God. They're lifting up their hands to a star created by the Son of God. Because that's what humans do when things of value or worth are placed in front of them. And I brought the last one just because I want you to pray for that guy in the striped shirt right there. I think he hyper extended his right elbow. You know what I'm talking about? People in the back see that okay? I mean, you're like, what just happened to those people? Okay, they live in a town most of you have never heard of called Soichi, Russia. And they just heard the news that they got awarded the 2014 Winter Olympic Games and they went berserk. Crazy. You know why? Because it doesn't matter if you're a little kid in Indonesia, it doesn't matter if you're uh, young people at a stadium in, in, in Germany. It doesn't matter if you've ate uh, 70 hot dogs in two minutes. It doesn't matter if you look through all humanity when something of value or worth is placed in front of the human heart, the human responds, the human engages, the human says, yeah, that is what I believe is amazing and good. So I just offer to you, if Christ is all he says he is, and if he's all we're singing that he is tonight, if he is the giver of life, if he is the one who breaks the chains and sets us free, if he is the one who has the power to give us life and breath and a place in the family of God, then I'm telling you, I am not going to hold back. I'm going to give him everything. by a whale. It's not going to happen. There are a hundred ways you see this in humanity. You just start looking for them. And I'll close with just one last one. We talked about the highs of jubilant celebration and everybody gets that. We know what it's like to praise God when the sun's out. Life is good. But just the opposite, same thing. And that's in the lowest places. And you see this in humanity. And that's people lifting their hands up in desperate hope. You know what I'm talking about? Like when you see the CNN footage after a tsunami or a flood, earthquakes, disaster. You see people in the streets. It doesn't matter whether they're religious or not religious. They're just in the streets with their hands lifted up and they're going, where are we going to turn? Who's going to help us? How are we going to survive? Some of you know that place tonight, don't you? It's called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. And on the same road tonight, some of you are on the pinnacle. And you're just praising God for the goodness in your life. And just seven seats down is a person at the lowest low. And they came into this place tonight wondering if they're going to make it through the night. You know, we rarely get super honest in church and in gatherings like this, but if I could just be slightly vulnerable, actually a lot vulnerable, I know that place. And if you're in it tonight, I just want you to know I know that place. About this time three years ago, hard, some hard things going on in our life. I woke up at 2 in the morning and I literally thought I was dying. I thought my heart was going to blow out of my chest. I've never experienced anything like it before. I couldn't calm it down. I couldn't settle down. I never went back to sleep that night. And I'll spare you all my, my journey details, but I'll just say this to you, that though, that night led me into a tunnel of darkness. I ended up in an emergency room twice in the next 24 hours. I thought I was dying. I, mean, I was having symptoms like crazy, just amazing, nuts of stuff happened to me. I started going to doctor after doctor after doctor. And every time I'd go, they'd say, no, this is okay. This checks out all right. No, that's not wrong with you. No, that's not wrong with you. Like, we're having all these symptoms. And I'm like, yeah, we think it might be something deeper than, than that. We think it might be some, some, they started using words like some anxiety or panic disorder of some kind or, or could be depression triggered something. But no one could pinpoint it and 
weeks were going by and no